Thanks. Right, just under six months to go until the referendum on independence for Scotland. And although the polls still put the unionists in the lead, some of them, the nationalist yes campaign are gaining ground. Despite big unionist interventions on the currency, Europe and business, the nationalists seem to be waging the more successful and positive campaign street by street and town by town and the polls are closing. The former Labour Chancellor, Alistair Darling, is running the Better Together campaign. Good morning, Mr Darling. As the Sunday Times confirms this morning, Good morning. week by week, month by month, you are losing this argument, aren't you? No, the polls don't show that at all. I mean, if you take today's poll, uh, which has always been something of an outlier in Scottish polls, um, the, and you look at the change from this month to last month, it hasn't changed one bit. Our lead is exactly the same. And, you know, con slightly contrary to what you were just saying a moment ago, every single poll conducted this year and act in last year as well shows us with a consistent lead. And That's if you look scary. at the polls over the last, since the beginning of this year, some of them show our lead increasing, some of them show a slight movement towards the nationalists. But I do think you need to get this in perspective. Uh, the majority of people in Scotland are against independence. I believe we will win this, provided we get across our arguments about the benefits of the UK to Scotland, uh, and, 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 and we make our arguments strongly. We will win this argument. But you need to get these polls in perspective. Well, this one today is an outlier, and actually, if you look at it, it's not changed a jot since the last time they polled. Respective sophologists like Professor John Curtis at Glasgow are also saying that things are narrowing, the Yes campaign is gaining ground, and they feel that you're losing the argument. Are they wrong as well? No. Or is it, he it, wrong specifically? John Curtis is, 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 a, is, a, is a respective pollster. Some polls have shown some tightening, and, you know, for heaven's sake, you know, there's six months to go here. There's bound to be polls will move around. I just wish we sometimes got the same attention directed to the polls where our, increase, our, lead, our lead actually increased. But, you know, the opinion polls are an approximate guide. There's a usual um, caveats of buckets of salt should be poured upon all of these things. Mm. I just believe that we will win this argument, provided okay. we can continue to get our arguments across. There is a very strong, powerful case for staying part of the UK in terms terms of jobs, in terms of opportunities, in terms of the ability of us in Scotland as a country uh, to improve people's standard of living, to make sure we have a fair and just society, we have strong bonds of culture, of kinship, of family, a shared history of 300 years. There are powerful cases, a powerful case for staying in the UK to make, be made and we will continue to make it. Actually, the negativity which you referred to in your introduction is largely coming from the nationalists who, who in the last week alone, when anyone speaks out against them, they monster them. We had a businessman earlier uh, in the week who said that he thought staying in the UK was good for his business. The behaviour towards him was disgraceful. You know, it brought shame on Scotland. Equally, the CBI was monstered when they appeared before a, a committee in the Scottish Parliament. We are the ones who are being yeah. positive about the case for the United Kingdom. Well, the nationalists are consistently negative the and the consistently it will do anything to shout down anyone who speaks out against them. The argument being made against you on that argument is, is that what you're really doing again and again is warning Scots they can't have this, they can't have that, of the dangers of independence, rather than making a really uh, positive and enthusiastic case for staying British, a case for Britishness, if you like. Do you think there needs to be some kind of change of tone? Look, I I've made it clear right from the start that we will make a very strong positive case of the sort I've just been outlining as to why it is in Scotland's best interest to be part of something bigger. In many ways the best of both worlds where we have a strong uh, devolved Scottish Parliament with powers over things like health and education but also we recognise it's in the interests of us all and um, Scottish firms and businesses in particular uh, to be able to have ready unimpeded access uh, right across the UK. No regulatory difficulties, uh, no currency difficulties or anything like that and actually if you look at the people who have been most vociferous really in the last couple of months or so about if you like the disadvantages of breakup of separation it's not been our campaign it's been Scottish businesses people like Standard Life one of the largest pension companies in Europe who point out that 90% of their customers mm. uh, happen to live in the rest of the UK and they're extremely worried about the consequences of putting a barrier between them and, uh, and their customers so we will make the positive case but no, nothing would please the nationalists more this morning 
If I said, look, we're not going to ask any more hard questions again. When we ask questions about membership of the European Union, they claimed they had a legal opinion which said it would be okay. What happened? It turned out it didn't exist. What they were saying is simply not true. Equally, in relation to the currency, even their own people are saying what they want is to quote nonsense on stilts. You know, th this is a, a, a campaign where we are right. talking about not just the future of Scotland, we're talking about the future of the United Kingdom. So yes, I will continue okay. to be positive, positive about this because I believe passionately about it, but I'm not going to be put off asking questions which sometimes make the nationalists distinctly uncomfortable, which is why they don't, right. want, okay. they don't want me to be asking these questions. When are we going to hear from Labour in detail about your proposals for more devolution if the vote goes no? Well, you did last, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the, the, the Labour Party published uh, proposals in relation to uh, further devolution. The Liberals have done it earlier this year, and the Tories are publishing something, I think, in, in May. Um, you know, what, what, is, what is clear is, you know, right from the time that um, the Scottish Parliament was established uh, in 1999, um, the, the settlement has moved on. And indeed, next year, in two, two, sorry, rather than 2016, the Scottish Parliament will, for the first time, be obliged to set an income tax rate. So it has. Right. the power to spend money but equally important it has the power it is a responsibility of raising money now all the parties are saying look there's other things you can do in our case uh, you know devolving more responsibility in relation to housing benefit you know something you're about to discuss mm. I think with with Ian Duncan Smith this it makes sense to link housing benefit with housing policy which is already devolved equally in relation to uh, the work program and other measures too so yes that process will go on uh, but the point right. is, it benefits Scotland to have that okay. strong, powerful Scottish Parliament, but it also benefits us to be part of the UK. Again, it's a positive case, and a one that needs to be made again and again. And as I say, it, the majority of people the, in Scotland a, are simply not persuaded by the nationalist argument. They do see the advantages of being part right. of something bigger, and that's very important. There was a very interesting change made to the finance bill, number two finance bill, last week which allowed for a variation in tax rates in Scotland and has been interpreted as a major move by the government to allow much more variation on tax by the Scottish Parliament in the future. Is that the kind of thing that you're expecting? Did you know about that and can you explain it to us? Well, look, I think there was rather a, quite a lot of over-interpretation of what I think was a fairly minor matter. But the Scot as you right, know, okay. the Scottish uh, Parliament has had the power to uh, vary the income tax rate since it was set up. It's never been used. Not, um, you know, I think only once did a, a political party campaign on increasing tax, and it lost rather badly. Um, the proposals I was just referring to, which are the biggest single change to the entire uh, settlement, if you like, uh, the, the power to actually, uh, and, and the responsibility to fix the income tax rate, that's coming through. Um, you know, the changes in the finance bill that you, you're talking about are rather more technical than that. But, right. you know, okay. sh sh okay. The can big I, thing is that move on that most people in Scotland technical. want to see a powerful Scottish Parliament, yeah. and that's, that's what they're going to get. But it, it, is, it works because, as I say, we have also have the advantages of being part of the UK. That's something big as well as, of course, the things we haven't talked mm. about this sure. morning, the non-economic arguments, if you like, you know, that shared, that shared okay. identity, that shared history, and above all, the opportunity to do something better for right. people in Scotland as well as people in the UK. Fine. Um, can I just turn to one final matter, which is, this has been a very, as we, we've just been hearing, divisive um, issue in Scotland. There's been a lot of hot tempers raised and a lot of uh, sore things said by people t to each other. The SNP has now, are now talking in private, clearly, according to Scotland on Sunday, about the, a post-devolution agreement, a uh, post-independence uh, agreement on devolution and so forth. Do you think it's going to be possible for tempers to settle and Scotland to bind itself back together again, whatever the result, yes or no, after the referendum? Well, I, I certainly hope so, because nothing uh, is more likely to turn people off than the sight of politicians squabbling with each other. And that's, that's, that was what distressed me about what, what was happening last week in Scotland, where members of the public, not politicians, were being monstered. Now, that's got to stop. The eyes of the world are, are on Scotland for the next six months, and it shames Scotland when they see that. Uh, you know, whether you talk about further devolution, I mean, you know, sadly, you know, in both in, when we set up the Scottish Parliament with the Constitutional Convention and in relation to the proposals in relation to tax, the one party that wouldn't cooperate was the Nationalists. Now, if they're willing to cooperate, that's good. Uh, but, you know, first of all, we have to decide as a nation whether or not we are staying part of the UK. 
I believe that we, as I said, we will win that argument. After that, there will be further discussions, and it would be to the good of Scotland if people did work together, rather than indulging in you know, name-calling, shouting, personal abuse, and so on. That's got no part in a civilized society. Uh, so I hope, yes, things do calm down, because I think the entire benefit will, the entire nation, the entire country will benefit from that. Mr. Darling, I've never heard you quite so fired up. Thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning.